All right, everybody, welcome back to RDs versus BS. This is our YouTube channel where we're going to further break down supplement labels based off of what we talked about in our podcast, which this week was the was apple cider vinegar. And we mentioned briefly some supplements that you can find on the market. So today we're going to talk about the gummies because I think that those are most popular. At least that's what I've seen most on social media. Um, definitely seen some pretty outrageous and too good to be true claims associated with those gummies. So we're going to break down those supplement facts, uh, see if any of those claims hold any water and yeah, I'm excited to get going. Me too. You know, this is one that definitely hits close to home because a few of my close friends have texted me saying, I love these things. I take them every day. What do you think? And you know, before I feel like I didn't have a very like concise way to tell them exactly my thoughts. So really looking forward to getting into the most popular one that I, I see when you just do a Google search, it's the goalie apple cider vinegar gummies. It's like far and away the most popular. So we're going to dive into that a little bit today. But before we even get into that specific supplement, we did want to just quickly review, you know, the claims of apple cider vinegar and our overall take. Um, definitely listen to our podcast episode on this for more information, but we thought a little bit of a review might set up this YouTube episode nicely. So Marie, do you want to take it away? Just some of the, the claims that are out there for apple cider vinegar. Like why would someone even want to take this supplement? Yeah, so the biggest claims that we see is a weight loss claim, a diabetes control claim, so basically helping with blood sugars, um, a claim that it helps with digestion and bloating. So there's a ton of other claims too. Um, it is something that's been used in traditional medicine. So it is sort of one of those cure-alls where if you put in a Google search for apple cider vinegar benefits, you'll see everything across the board. It basically according to Google can cure any ailment under the sun, but these are the ones that we see the most and, and we have the most questions on. So I'll take the weight loss one. Um, there has been some research done on apple cider vinegar and weight loss. And, you know, people have just taken these studies and completely taken them out of context and said, oh yeah, now apple cider vinegar equals weight loss. So in the podcast, you know, we look into these studies and we found that, you know, all of the ones that have been done have been done on overweight or obese people. So that's the first thing I think. And it was an average of, of one to two kilograms lost in 12 weeks. And that, you know, ends up being about what, two to two to four pounds. And in one case that was when it was paired with calorie deficit. So, you know, you gotta eat less and take all this apple cider vinegar and you might lose two to four pounds. And one study even found when people stopped taking the apple cider vinegar, they gained all the weight back. So if there is a weight loss, you know, if, it, if apple cider vinegar is tied to weight loss, it's very minor. It's only been shown in obese people or overweight people. And it also seems to go away, the weight loss, once you stop taking the apple cider vinegar. So a little bit of research out there, but not nothing strong enough to suggest that people, that everyone should be taking apple cider vinegar. Yeah, so for the diabetes claim, they're actually, I would say out of all the claims, there's the most research to support this claim. Um, it does seem to have a small effect on blood sugar and reducing blood sugar uh, after a meal if you take apple cider vinegar. Um, but again, these studies were all done in the context of people that were already doing a good job controlling their blood sugar. It's a very minimal effect. Uh, so it's not like you can just eat whatever you want and just take apple cider and your diabetes goes away. Absolutely not. And you know, the mechanism in which it works, it's sort of similar for weight loss and diabetes. It seems to uh, slow how quickly you digest things. So on a weight loss side, it just keeps, helps keep you fuller for longer. You just tend to eat less when you are taking apple cider, 
cider vinegar, and then from a diabetes side, if you are digesting things slower, you're absorbing it slower, and so it's, it's helping with blood sugar control. So it does seem to have a little bit of an impact on that, but again, these are both minor impacts, and so you have to do a bunch of other lifestyle changes to even see that effect at all. Definitely, yeah. And then, so to move on to the digestion and bloating claims, so will it help you de-bloat? Will it help your digestion? Um, research isn't there yet, proving that that's the case, but you know, theoretically it would help because this apple cider vinegar is a fermented product, meaning it has probiotics in it, but it just hasn't been studied. So we can't say that it's going to help. So that's one that, you know, unfortunately, unlike the weight loss and diabetes claim, um, not much there when it comes to digestion and deep bloating. Deep bloating. I've never heard that. Deep, deep. <laughs> what is it? Getting rid of bloat. I don't know. Is that a word? Unbloating. <laughs> Deflating. Unbloating. Deep. No. I have no idea. Tell us if, what the real word is out there, folks, because uh, I'm not sure. Now that I'm saying it a bunch of times, I think yeah, I might have just made up a word there. <laughs> So again, that was like our Cliff Notes version on all of this. Listen to our podcast for more information. Um, but today we want to talk about specifically the gummies because this is the supplement that is pretty big in social media. Um, it's a gummy. So like who doesn't love waking up and taking their gummies? I think, you know, we're, we're the Flintstone gummy generation. So I think we just got accustomed to waking up and taking something in the morning to help with health and we're going to go through the supplement panel of the Golgi apple cider vinegar gummy. Yeah. And so when I was looking this up, something that really stood out to me was all of the testimonials um, around these and how people take this and they say things like, I had acne before and now all my acne has gone. Or they started taking it and they're like, I've lost so much weight. Um, so just a disclaimer out there, testimonials do not equal the truth or real life or research. They're just testimonials. You don't know who these people are. You don't even really know if they're real people. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I get, you know, caught up in these testimonials a lot of times. And I think, well, it, it worked for them. It's got to work for me. Um, so, yeah, just keep that in mind because this one is especially like so many positive testimonials. Anyway, okay, so let's get into these goalie apple cider vinegar gummies. So let's look at the supplement facts. Um, one gummy is a serving, though they do suggest on the website taking two of them per day, even though it says one is a serving. So you'll, you'll be getting two of these per day you know, there's not a whole lot to them. It's pretty simple as far as supplements go. There's um, 12 calories per one gummy, three and a half grams of carbs, a gram of sugar, which is pretty amazing because I have heard people say who have taken these that they taste really good and they're doing something to mask that apple cider vinegar flavor um, pretty well. And that was always my thought. And then I, I looked at the actual supplement and I realized, you know, you're not tasting it because there's hardly any in there. <laughs> in one gummy, it's 500 milligrams, which means it's half of a gram. But that is not, that's not a lot. And the thing with Goalie is that they say, like, we use the apple cider vinegar with the mother. It has the, all the, you know, probiotics in it. Okay, that's great. But the amount really matters. So... Marie, can you take us through a couple of the studies we looked at? And we, what we really wanted to do here was compare, you know, the studies that show some positive effects of apple cider vinegar, how much apple cider vinegar people had to take to see an effect compared to these gummies. Cause this just blew me away. First of all, there, there haven't been any studies that dive into these claims that are specific to either this specific supplement or a, a gummy at all. So it's all been done using actual, just true apple cider vinegar, the fermented form that has um, the mother in it. So already we're like comparing a little bit of apples to oranges. 
Um, but pun intended. Uh, yes, <laughs> ap- apples to apple cider vinegars. Nice. <laughs> but uh, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, so you know, the studies that did show to have some sort of impact. They're a little bit inconsistent, but in one study, there was 30 milliliters of apple cider vinegar, which is almost 30 grams. It's 29.2 grams. And then there was another study that had that showed that there was a little bit of weight loss, and that one had 15 milliliters, which again is almost 15 grams. It's 14.6 grams. The study that we looked at about diabetes control, again, using apple cider vinegar, they used 20 grams. So we've got you know, efficacious doses of 20 grams, 29 grams, 14 grams. So compare that to half a gram. That is like exponentially bigger than half of a gram. Um, And even if you're taking two of them a day, even if you take two in one sitting, that's only one gram versus 30 times that being the amount that was shown to have an effect. So It would take you taking the whole bottle at one time to get the equivalent of 30 milliliters or 30 grams of apple cider vinegar, which which is crazy to me because now I'm, I mean, I'm trying to do quick, I'm, I'm getting my calculator because, you know, calorie wise, so there's 24 calories per, um, two gummies and there's. 30 th- so it's like 720 calories to get to eat the whole bottle to get the equivalent of one shot of apple cider vinegar that has like five calories if even that you know it's just and whatever calories this and that but it's just like that's crazy to me yeah flash no one's ever gonna take the whole it's expensive you're not gonna take the whole thing but yeah. Nor do we recommend doing that, by the way. No, like, please don't. We're not saying that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it just, it's, so, you know, you were saying, people say this tastes good and no wonder because they're barely putting any apple cider vinegar in here. And then you get down to the ingredients. So you have to list ingredients in the um, weight amount the most, you know, the ingredient that has the most amount by weight has to be listed first, and then they're listed in an order of, of weight. So you've got cane sugar is the first ingredient. Then you've got another sugar, tapioca syrup. So um, not looking great in terms of like what this actual gummy is made out of. Clearly the reason it tastes good is because it's just like a sugar gummy. Right. It's really just giving you a bunch of sugar negligible amounts of other vitamins and essentially a negligible amount of apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I agree. And then, you know, we kind of went through all the other ingredients, but you know, organic beetroot and pomegranate, really, really small amounts. MCG means micrograms. So that's just, it's a very, very small amount. It's just for flavor. It's for color. Um, So the real thing that we're looking at here is the apple cider vinegar. These gummies are just a way to get apple cider vinegar, um, but it's nowhere near the amount that's been shown to be effective in very specific cases. And we're not just like picking on goalie here. Like this is pretty standard. We looked up a bunch of different apple cider vinegar gummies and we saw the most that we saw was one gram per two gummies. And again, just like not even close to what has been shown to be efficacious in human trials so yeah unfortunately i think that these are just kind of gimmicky so not to needs us <laughs> yeah to... not to give it away yes sam um i mean you kind of already said marie but thoughts on the bs stamp for apple cider vinegar gummies in general yes they are bs They're a marketing tool, and ultimately, when you dig into the ingredients, it's not giving you enough of the active ingredient to have any sort of impact. Yeah, I agree. BS stamp, because what they're doing here is taking actual research and actual science and, you know, expanding it to the point where, like, they can, they say, they claim, like, there's research behind this, yes, but not 
the amount of apple cider vinegar taken in the research is in these gummies. It's just not right. You know, it's making people think that if they take a tiny percentage of apple cider vinegar, that they're going to have the same effects that some people had in the study. It just, just doesn't work like that. So um, don't fall for this one. It's not worth your money. BS stamp. And, you know, talking about money, I always love comparing comparing these things. So this is where we kind of get into alternatives. Um, so a bottle of the Goalie apple cider vinegar gummies, which is going to last you 30 days, is $19. I will say, like, if, if you're going to take the apple cider vinegar route and, you know, you, you want to take it, I would not get these gummies because a 32 ounce bottle of apple cider vinegar, like the actual stuff is only $5 and that's going to give you your 30 servings. So you're saving money there. You're getting way more than what you got in the actual gummies. Also, like we've said before, check out the podcast for all of our other actual alternatives for the claims like weight loss, diabetes, digestion, and bloating. Um, because you know, we have a ton of other suggestions. We won't go through all of them now, but overall apple cider vinegar, it's, it's just not really all that it's hype, hyped up to be, especially these gummies. You know, you brought up earlier the testimonials and I wanna kind of quickly talk about why sometimes people do experience some really good benefits from a product like this that like we were saying, as we know, doesn't have enough of the active ingredient to actually be doing the things that they're claiming it's doing and why you see that. So I would say, first of all, people tend to make more than one positive health change at a time. So a lot of times when people decide that they want to get healthy, they're, you know, they saw this apple cider vinegar gummy, you know, made people healthy. So they bought that. But then they also decided to start exercising and they also decided to, and it might not even be something like, oh, I started a new diet. I'm exercising. I'm taking this gummy. It might be a subconscious thing where if you are making steps to become healthier, you might eat more vegetables than you did before. And it might not even be a conscious thing, but you are actively taking steps to get healthier and it tends to be more than one action. Very few people are like, I'm going to get healthy and the literal only thing I'm going to change about my day is I'm going to start my day with an apple cider gummy. Uh, those people are not seeing results. I would uh, put a lot of money on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, we laugh, but I think people need to hear that yeah. because it comes off as that in the testimonials. It comes off as I lived my life without these and all I did was starting to take these and now I'm like the epitome of health. It's yeah. just not how it works. Yeah. Um, I would say another thing, the power of the placebo effect, effect. I mean, seriously, if you go in and you invest money, there's also the sunk cost fallacy. So if you've invested money into it, it is to your best interest for you to succeed from doing that because you've invested money into it. So if you've bought into this, if you've told people that you're starting it and you're all excited and they're expecting to see results from you, um, you know, and then there's a little bit of a placebo effect of like the expectation that it's going to work. Again, people have results from other health, like lifestyle changes that they've made that they're not even like consciously making those decisions or they might kind of be consciously aware of it, but they've convinced themselves that it's, the apple cider vinegar, not the extra mile that they've walked in a day, not the decision to wake up and walk your dog in the morning instead of just letting him outside in the backyard. You know, so power of placebo, power of buying something and so wanting to assure yourself that that, that you make sure that you lose weight. Um, and sometimes they're just straight up lying. I mean, you can't get away from that. Um, sometimes people are actors and they have no affiliation with the company other than the fact that they've been paid to give a testimonial. They may or not, may not even be taking the supplement. Sometimes people Photoshop before and after pictures. I mean, like, you don't have to look very far on Instagram to, like, see people just standing at a different angle and being like, look at... And it's like, you didn't even change your outfit. I can tell you took this on the exact same day. You know, 
So there's a bunch of different reasons why people are either lying or, you know, exaggerating the benefits, or if they are actually getting benefits from this product, it is because it's something that they've done in the context of other lifestyle changes that is all be is all the reason that you know they're achieving their goals that they want to so um i just wanted to touch on that because i think that it's easy to hear or watch us and be like yeah but my best friend sally you know you, you trust your best friend sally hopefully you'll get to know us well enough soon that you trust us but you can trust us yeah but it's it's so easy to get sucked into the the personal stories versus the clinical data. And just that's why those personal stories might be there. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's such a good point, Marie. I love bringing like the psychology into it a little bit because that has such a big impact on, on food and nutrition and results and all of that. That's really interesting stuff and a great way to explain it. Yeah. Because the testimonials, they get me sometimes too. I'm like, sometimes I'm questioning everything I know. I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? And then I'll look up research. It's like, no, it's still, you know, the same research that you saw a month ago. But anyway, thank you all for joining us so much. Like we said, we have a podcast too. So Check out our podcast if you're interested on more of the science behind um, apple cider vinegar. If you have any ideas or things that you want us to talk about, give the BS stamp or not, um, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, keep your eyes open for more podcasts and YouTube episodes coming up soon.